Hello dear students, today we will be learning about triangles that is chapter number 12 and it is on page number 110 on uh, for class 5 textbook for class 5 page number 110 and chapter 12 triangles. So I believe we have all heard about triangles before but before we go into triangles let's learn about two, the two types of points today. So the first type of point, for example, I have a line, all right, and I have marked three points on this line. Let's name them as A, B, C. So if there is a line, sorry, if there is a line and there are three points on it, all right, and these points, they are not going to, you know, they, are, they will all lie in the same line. So these points are called collinear points okay so these type of points are called collinear points that means they lie they lie in the same line on the same path now if we talk about another type of point that is if i draw three points anywhere they do not lie in the same line if i draw three points anywhere and i connect them if i join them I form a triangle. I can make it in this manner also. When I join them, still a triangle. So these type of points are called non-collinear points. So in short, a triangle is formed by three non-collinear points. Okay? A triangle is formed by three non-collinear points. So this is the basic concept of a triangle. Now, when you talk about triangle, triangle, the first part that we have learned is that a triangle is formed by three collinear points. That means those three points will not lie on the same plane, oh, sorry, on the same line. And triangle also can be, you can also try to understand this by looking at this name. Tri means three angle, we know what angle is. So this figure will have three angles, okay? So a basic triangle will look something like this. Let's mark it A, B, C. Now we already know triangles have three angles. Three angles angles see these are the angles formed angle a angle b angle c so we have three angles and another characteristic is one two three that means three sides right so a triangle has three angles and three sides and the the point where angles are formed this these points where angles are formed are called vertices, okay? So there are three vertices. Vertices is plural. And if you want to identify one point, it will be called as vertex, okay? So this is for singular. All right? So a triangle is basically any closed figure with three sides, all right? Any closed figure with three sides, it has three angles, it has three sides. We can mark these angles as one, two, and three. It has three sides, one, two, three, and it has three vertices. One, two, three. So this is all about uh, triangles. Let's move on to the next topic. <coughs> we will be learning about classification of triangles on the basis of sides. So this is the first topic, classification of triangles on the basis of sides. Now the first type, the first type of triangle that we're going to talk about is called equi lateral triangle 
Now, what are equilateral triangles? Equilateral triangles means, for example, I have this triangle here. And for, let's take an example that this side is 3 centimeter, this side is also 3 centimeter, this side is also 3 centimeter. Let it, let the marks, uh, let me mark them as ABC. Now we can see from this figure that AB is equal to 3 centimeter, BC is equal to 3 centimeter, AC is equal to 3 centimeter. That means in triangle ABC, this is the symbol for triangle. In triangle ABC, AB line is equal to BC is equal to AC. They are all 3 centimeter. So through this example, we will define, we can define equilateral triangle. That means equilateral, equilateral triangles are those triangles whose all sides are equal, okay? Equal measurement. For example, I draw another circle, uh, triangle and I mark it 2.5 centimeter. If this is an equilateral triangle, it has to be 2.5, 2.5 on all the three sides. So equilateral triangle are those triangles which have equal sides. All the sides should be equal. The next is isocellus, isocellus triangle, I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S, -E -E isocellus triangle. Now in isocellus triangle, let's take an example of a triangle here. Let's say this is 4 centimeter and this is 4 centimeter but this is 3 centimeter. Now, if you look at this triangle, you can see that two sides are equal. That means both of them are 4 cm, but this is different, 3 cm. So, in isosceles triangle, sorry, to define isosceles triangle, we will say that a triangle whose two sides are equal is called an isosceles triangle. Two sides equal. So, in triangle PQR, PQR or PRQ, there are so many ways to name these triangles. So in triangle PQR, we can say that line segment P, PQ and PR is equal to 4 cm. That means two lines are equal. So these type of triangles are called isosceles triangles. Now, for the third type, the third type is called a scalene triangle. For instance, if I draw any triangle, I draw any triangle here. I mark this as 5 cm, let this be 6 cm and this is 4 cm. Triangle ABC or triangle BAC or triangle BCA, there are so many ways you can name this. So you can see that one side is 4 cm, one is 5 cm, the other is 6 cm. That means to define scaling triangle in a triangle where no sides are equal, okay, where no sides are equal is called a scalene triangle all right so <coughs> we can also look at an example here we have a types of triangle on the basis of sides the first is equilateral one two three all the sides are equal speciality of equality equilateral triangles are even the angles are same all right 60 60 60 similarly for isosceles these two sides are equal for scaling, none of the sides are equal, all right? So this is a basic concept of the classification of angles or triangles on the basis of sides. Now we will learn about the next topic. The next topic is classification of triangles on the basis of angles. Before we move on here, we have already studied about right angles. We have already studied about acute angles. We have already studied about obtuse angles. So we are going to classify them according to these angles. The first one is right angled triangle, meaning 
we know what right angle is. Right angle means 90 degree, right? So any triangle with one angle, okay, with any one of its angle as 90 degree, right? Any triangle with a 90 degree is called a right angle triangle. It should it it it, it doesn't mean that this triangle has to be in this manner only. This triangle can also be drawn like this, for example, indicating 90 degree here. So a triangle which has at least one angle as 90 degree is called a right angle triangle, okay? The next one is acute angled triangle. Now we know what acute is. Acute angles are those angles which lie between 0 to 90 degree, meaning it should be less than 90 degree, right? So less than 90 degree means 1 degree till 89. So for example, this is your 90 degree. And you're, start, starting your, you're starting to count the angles from this side. So 0, 1, 2, it will go on till 90. So any angle that is formed here, it can be this angle, it can be this angle, all right? All these angles are called acute angles. Now, uh, an acute angle are those, uh, an acute angle triangles are those triangles which have angles less than 90 degree. For example, let's say this is 60 degree, let's say this is 70 degree, and let's say this is 50 degree. So all these angles are less than 90 degree. So these are called as acute angled triangle. And the last type of triangle is obtuse angled triangle. Now in an obtuse angled triangle, we know what obtuse is. Obtuse means one angle, uh, the angle should be greater than 90 degrees. So in this type of triangle, one angle will be greater than, one angle will be greater than 90 degree. For example, this. Let's say this is 120 degree. Let's say this is 30 degree, 20 degree, okay? We can, sorry. Let this also be 30 degree. So we can say that by looking at this triangle, we can see that this is, this angle is greater than 90 degree. So these type of angles which have angles greater than, this type of triangles which have angles greater than 90 degree are called obtuse angle triangles, all right? So with this classification of triangles on the basis of sides and angles are done, let's move on to the next topic. The next topic that we will talk about is angle sum property of a triangle. Now this angle sum property of a triangle, it, it states that, <coughs> sorry, the internal angles, okay, the sum of these angles. There are three angles. Let's assume this as 60, let's assume this as 50, and let's assume this as 70. The internal angles of a triangle, let's mark it as P, Q, R, should always be equal to 180 degree. So this means, the sum means add all the angles, angle P plus angle Q plus angle R. When you add all these angles, you should get 180 degree, all right? So let's try to solve it. Angle P is 60 degree. Angle Q is 50 degree. The last one is 70 degree. So when you add this, you get 110 degree plus 70 degree. If you add this, you are getting 180 degree. So the interior angle of any triangle, when you add them up, you should always get 180 degree. And we know that 180 degree is a straight line. This is a straight line. A straight line's angle is 180 degree. So to understand even further, let's take a quick example. Here I have a simple 
triangle with me. I have marked the angles as 1, 2, 3. Now, if I tear these angles, I tear them into three different parts, all right? I tear them like this. I take the first angle and I put it here, all right? The first angle. Next angle, I take it and I put it in this manner, all right? And the third angle, I take it and put it here. A straight line is formed, right? Just underneath, sorry. Underneath, you can see a straight line. So this straight line, see, you can see that a straight line is formed. And this straight line, I've already told you that it is equal to 180 degree. So this proves that the sum of the three interior angles of a triangle is always equal to 180 degree, all right? So this is all about uh, the concepts. Before we wind up, let's take a quick look at some questions in the question uh, exercise given. Please turn to page number 113. Question number one, a figure is given, it's marked as A, B, C, all right? The first question, observe the figure alongside and write the name of, one, the sides of the triangle. Now you have to name the sides of the triangle. The sides of the triangle is, the first side is, let's say, A, B, let A, B be the first side, then B, C and C, A or A, C, whichever, all right? These are the sides of this triangle. If you look at question number two, classify the, tri oh, sorry, the angles of the triangle. Now we have to identify the angles of the triangle. So let us first mark the angles. The first angle is this, the second, the third, all right? So we have learned how to name angles. This can be angle A or B O A, a B O C, a B A C. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Angle B A C or angle C A B. First angle. The second angle is B. We can write it in this manner. You can name in different ways. And the third angle is C. So you can try naming the angles for B and C, all right? And the third question is the vertices of the triangles. Now we have already talked about vertices. These endpoints are called your vertices. So A, B, and C. A, B, and C are your vertices. The fourth one, the, write the name of the triangle in six different ways. Now, I have already uh, told you earlier that these triangles can be named in so many different ways. Now, let's look at uh, the different ways in which we can name this triangle. The first name is triangle A, B, C. Triangle A, B, C. Or we can also name it as triangle A, C, B. Like this, A, C, B. Or we can also name it as triangle B, A, C. B, a, C or triangle B, C, A, triangle B, C, A or we can also name this triangle as C, A, B, triangle C, A, B and triangle C, B, A, triangle C, B, A, all right. So these are the different ways in which you can name the triangles. The first is triangle A, B, C. The second is triangle A, C, B, triangle B, A, C, triangle B, C, A, triangle C, A, B, and triangle C, B, A. So with this, the first part of the question is over. When you look at question number two, they want us to classify the triangles according to their angles. Now, if you look at the figure, you, you can check the interior angles. If the interior angle 
if in, uh, when you look at question number A, the first figure, you can find a 90 degree angle. So if a 90 degree angle is there, it means it is a right angle triangle. So similarly, for acute, obtuse, please try to identify them according to the concepts that we have already studied. Similarly, for question three, you can look at the measures of each of the sides and you'll be able to understand whether it is an equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle or a scalene triangle, all right? So these two, I'm leaving for you again for the last part of the question, which of the following can be the angles of a triangle? So different angles are given. Try adding them up. For A, add them up. For B, you add them wherever you get 180 degree, all right? Wherever you get a sum of 180 degree, those angles can be formed as a triangle. The rest, they cannot be formed as a triangle, all right? So with that, we have come to the end of this class where we have talked about triangles and its basic concepts. So with that, we will con conclude here and I hope you will keep uh, going through over and over again and try to practice and try to name all the different angles in different ways. So with that, we will end here and uh, till we meet again, thank you and see you.